What a great group of people to work with. So I want to thank my fellow board members for placing their trust in me to lead Maricopa County during a very difficult period. It really is an honor. A lot of the credit for where I am today goes to my wife, Marie, who passed away, who passed away eight years ago. In her final days, she made me promise that I would be okay and continue to serve our community. My children, Jack, Eric, and Shannon, and my son Eric is here with us today, have all encouraged me to step every step of the way. They want me to be happy and continue to stay active in the things that I love. And I found that serving my community is the thing I love to do, and I want to help us prepare for an even stronger future. It's great to serve on a board with such outstanding colleagues, and all of us benefit from the immensely talented and dedicated staff at Maricopa County. Joy Rich has built a team of highly knowledgeable prof professionals who help this board succeed every single day. So where do we go from here? Well, I have a few thoughts on that. Today, there's no greater threat to public health and safety than the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the last year, I've watched as our whole nation has been shaken to its core. Lives lost, businesses closed, and families unable to afford food, clothing, and shelter. And I believe it's incumbent upon all elected officials to use those tools available to us to help stop the suffering. That starts with tracking and slowing the spread of the disease itself. Under the leadership of Director Flanagan and Dr. Sunshine, Maricopa County has provided up-to-date guidance so individuals, families, businesses, schools, health care providers, and elected officials can make informed decisions to protect themselves and protect precious health care resources. And all of this occurred in alignment with CDC best practices and in partnership with the state. I believe science-backed mitigation efforts recommended by public health and supported by this board have in fact saved lives. Now we're entering a new phase of the pandemic. Vaccinations have started, but it'll be months until there's enough vaccine for everyone. My office will look to expand our efforts to educate on facts, especially when it comes to the safety and efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines. The critics are loud. We will be louder. We will continue to lead based on science and common sense. The faster we as a county, a state, and a nation can beat this virus, the faster we can secure a brighter future for all Americans. This crisis is not just impacting people's health. It's putting a strain on families and businesses. This board took immediate and aggressive action to ease the pain of our citizens. I want to thank Assistant County Manager Leanne Bone and Human Services Director Bruce Liggett for taking the board's direction and implementing targeted, successful assistance programs. To date, we provided $5 million to nonprofit organizations and $70 million in small business assistance. It's important to keep business stores open so they can serve their customers and keep their employees on the payroll. Our rental utility assistance program is helping to keep families in their homes. More than 6,000 households received assistance paying utility bills, and more than 7,200 households received help paying their rent. Protecting the most vulnerable and those most impacted is not just the right thing to do, it's our job. That's why we must also lead on the issue of homelessness. The 2020 point in count Point in time count showed more than 7,400 people in our county experiencing homelessness, with approximately half of those unsheltered. And that number will likely be larger in 2021. Because of the pandemic, some people are relying on the social safety net for the first time in their lives. Without our help, they too could become homeless. Maricopa County works continually to be part of that solution. And I'm especially grateful for the strong voice and leadership of Supervisor Gallardo. Steve, I look forward to working with you on this important countywide issue. 
This board dedicated 12 million of our CARES Act funds to move people off the streets, set up safer outdoor space, provide temporary overnight shelters, and assuring medical care for our most vulnerable. Further, this board has committed dollars to continue our support for those experiencing homelessness in 2021. I believe we need even more investment and focus on this issue. And I look forward to working with MAG, our cities and towns, the state and nonprofit partners on more permanent solutions to homelessness. No single entity can solve this problem alone. We'll seek to find opportunities with our partners to expand services throughout the county. I believe this issue deserves our best efforts and I know we have the talent to make progress. So now, there will be a time, hopefully in the very near future, where this county will return to some sense of normalcy. This will be a time of opportunity and we should be prepared. We know that as the economy recovers, we will be competing with other regions across the country for people, jobs, and opportunities. So what does Maricopa County have that other regions don't? 70 degree winter days for one. But more importantly, we have leaders in this region who understand that we are stronger when we work together. It's one reason our job market is one of the best in the country right now. And it's why we've been the fastest growing county for three years running. And if we can get government bodies on the same page, working in partnership with the country's most innovative school, ASU, and some of its most tech-savvy businesses, we can solve problems that once seemed insurmountable. That's the goal of the Smart Region Consortium that's championed by Supervisor Bill Gates. And it's a framework I hope to leverage during my chairmanship. Bill, I look forward to, I look to you for opportunities where the county may play a role and benefit from partnerships. Another issue that requires regional collaboration is transportation. That's something I know quite well after serving as chair on both the MAG Transportation Policy Committee and the State Transportation Board. The leaders who crafted Prop 400 in the early 2000s laid the groundwork for the growth we see today. Maricopa County is not only the fastest growing county in population, but we also lead the nation in attractive businesses. That's something those leaders can be proud of today. But now it's time for current leaders throughout Maricopa County to get serious about our infrastructure needs for the next 20 years. And this board has a significant role to play. I'll continue to be our representative on the MAG Transportation Policy Committee and I plan to work closely with Supervisor Hickman, who I've asked to stay on as our representative on the MAG Regional Council. I'll continue to keep my friendship with current members of the State Transportation Board. I truly hope that we, along with our cities, towns, and MAG, can put in the work and make the tough decisions necessary to assure the next generation has the opportunity to enjoy the quality of life that's available to our citizens today. During my tenure on the Board of Supervisors, we will complete a regional transportation and infrastructure plan that will go to the voters. A plan sent to the voters needs to assure regional equity and flexibility. Crafting and getting voter approval for a new regional transportation plan is one of my highest priorities not just for my chairmanship, but for as long as it takes to get it done right. In addition, I wanna say a few words about another opportunity that may be available to us. The incoming presidential administration has hinted that they're willing to work with Congress on passing infrastructure investment legislation. I need Maricopa County to be ready to participate in any program that will benefit this region. So I've asked MC DOT, our flood control district, to work closely with government relations team on the, on the progress of such a program. We need to be ready to jump on this opportunity, and I know through the leadership of Jennifer Toth and Mike Fulton, we can be. So please, let's do all we can to be prepared. Okay, now let's address 
the biggest elephant in the room, election integrity. First and most importantly, this Board of Supervisors welcomes good faith efforts to make our elections the best they can be. That's why my colleagues and I have supported a full forensic audit of our election tabulation equipment, all once the litigation related to 2020 general elections is over. And as Supervisor Chukri has said, we're totally committed to be best in class in elections and relentless improvement in all areas of our organization. We'll work with the new recorder, the legislature, and election experts, regardless of political party, to make sure people can vote when and how they want. They need to trust that their ballot was counted as it was cast. Some might say this is redundant or unnecessary, but I believe another audit is worth it, even if we can give one additional person a renewed faith in our democracy. To be clear, audits and hand counts to date have shown ballots cast in 2020 were tabulated accurately, starting with the presidential preference election in March, continuing into the August primary, and concluding with the November general. Many experts believe these were some of the finest and most secure elections we've ever had. Now, I've spent a lot of time looking into the allegations that have been thrown around since November 3rd. We all have. The stakes are too high not to take this very seriously. And I went in with an open mind. But today, there's no there there. I'm discouraged to hear people in the public square, on social media, and to my face insist otherwise. And I'm afraid it's easier than ever for misinformation to spread. In many ways, I believe this is the greatest challenge we face as a country, the ability to work from a shared set of facts. And the facts are 10 different times complaints about election fraud, manipulation, or tampering in Maricopa County elections have been brought against this board. Each case has been dismissed by the courts or withdrawn by the plaintiffs. I've asked enough questions and seen enough of our operation to feel comfortable looking anyone in the eye and giving them my word. Our elections were run with integrity and the results canvassed by this board were accurate. And I understand nothing I say from this podium is likely to convince those who flood our phone lines and inboxes. But I'm committed to keep trying. In 2021, we'll go above and beyond with our education efforts and communications to assure people of the integrity of our elections operations. Maricopa County has a fantastic staff, great leadership, and a desire to serve. They're the best of us. And theirs is a story I'm happy to tell to anyone willing to listen. Transparency, not just in elections, will be one of the cornerstones of my chairmanship. We will share information with the public, we'll be open to feedback, and we will be inclusive to all who want to participate. I expect our staff to be open to new ideas and perspectives and welcoming a public inquiry so long as that inquiry is in good faith. I know there are many tough decisions ahead. We're still in a public emergency. The need in our community is great, but the money is, is not unlimited. We benefited in the last year from federal CARES Act funds, but this year holds no such promise of that federal support. So under my leadership, request will need to be justified as necessary. I know my colleagues have a long history of being fiscally prudent, and we will work together on a fiscal year 2022 budget that works for all of our residents. I can't think of another time in my life where tomorrow holds so much uncertainty. In my two years on the board, we've been presented with so many unusual challenges that nothing seems shocking anymore. But what gives me great hope is what I've seen from this dais, in meetings with my colleagues and in the daily work of our county workforce. Whatever the challenge, whatever the crisis, 
Maricopa County does not flail wildly from place to place. We don't overreact and we don't underreact. We deal with issues professionally and logically. We do it with respect and we do it based on facts. I believe that approach will continue to serve us well in 2021. So thank you again for allowing me to serve as your chairman. I look forward to a, a much brighter new year. Thank you again.